There's more magma underneath Yellowstone than scientists anticipated a new study found. Yellowstone Caldera's magma reservoir contained substantial melt at depths that fueled prior eruptions. However, scientists don't think this means an eruption is more likely than previously estimated. Instead, the findings may help to improve the model of the supervolcano and its associated hazards. Imagine taming the destructive power of a supervolcano, harnessing its energy for the benefit of humanity. It's an audacious plan that could save us from destructive eruptions. But what could this plan possibly entail? Could it involve freezing the lava, or perhaps a sci-fi laser satellite drilling into the fiery heart of a volcano? Your imagination might run wild, but the reality is even more astonishing. Yellowstone, often called the eighth wonder of the world, is a geological marvel in Wyoming, USA. This massive reservoir of molten lava has been brewing for over 2.1 million years. During this time, it unleashed three eruptions at intervals between 2.1 million and 631,000 years ago. These cataclysmic events sent volcanic ash flying across western North America. But what's the NASA plan? How do they intend to tackle the threat lurking beneath Yellowstone? Let's hear it straight from the scientists at NASA. Natural systems uh, can, can throw us a lot of curveballs. A lot of things can happen that we're not really ready for. And this restless Yellowstone caldera is truly living, breathing. Every once in a while, it burp. Brian Wilcox from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory at the California Institute of Technology says that he reached a startling conclusion during his study. The supervolcano threat is substantially greater than the asteroid or comet threat. I was a member of NASA's Advisory Council on Planetary Defense, which studied ways for NASA to defend the planet from asteroids and comets, explains Brian Wilcox of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, at the California Institute of Technology. During that study, I came to the conclusion that the supervolcano threat is substantially greater than the asteroid or comet threat. Earth hosts around 20 supervolcanoes, capable of erupting every 100,000 years, posing a serious threat. A catastrophic eruption could lead to food scarcity, with a volcanic winter disrupting global food supplies. The 2012 estimate by the United Nations stated that the worldwide food reserve would only last 74 days. This number must have substantially decreased over the past decade. So what is NASA's solution? It's simple cool the supervolcano down. But is it effective? Yellowstone, a colossal heat generator, leaks 60 to 70 percent of its heat into the atmosphere via water seeping into the magma chamber. The rest accumulates inside, setting the stage for explosive eruptions once a critical threshold is crossed. The remainder builds up inside the magma, allowing it to dissolve more volatile gases and surrounding rocks. An explosive eruption is inevitable once the heat reaches a certain threshold. If we could extract more heat, the supervolcano might remain inactive. NASA's calculations suggest that a 35% increase in heat transfer from the magma chamber could neutralize the threat. But how? Our idea is to pump water deep into the supervolcano. Circulating at high pressure, this water would gradually absorb heat, returning at a scorching 350 degrees Celsius, 662 degrees Fahrenheit. But there's a catch, an estimated $3.46 billion investment. However, it's not just about preventing eruptions. It's about creating sustainable energy for the world, which could convince politicians to make the investment. We wanted to, to understand to what extent the heat released by volcanoes can be used to detect when volcanoes start to reactivate. There are many impacts of volcanic eruptions uh, you know, our goal is to minimize those impacts as, as much as possible. 
The excess heat could power a geothermal plant, providing a mere 10 cents per kilowatt hour of electricity. A game changer for the region, it could operate for tens of thousands of years. Yet, drilling into a supervolcano isn't without risks. The fear of triggering the very eruption we seek to prevent is still something that might haunt the scientists at NASA. NASA's counter-strategy is to approach from the lower sides, outside Yellowstone National Park boundaries, so they can extract the heat from beneath the magma chamber. But here's the sobering truth. Those initiating this project might never witness its completion or success. Hopefully in a few years we can have a better understanding of these signals, better understanding of volcanoes, and we can provide accurate forecasts. Cooling Yellowstone in this way would happen at a rate of one meter a year, taking tens of thousands of years until just cold rock is left. Success isn't guaranteed for hundreds, maybe even thousands of years, but this long-term vision might be our only choice in the face of catastrophe. Uh, not to put words in your mouth, but you're saying we are overreacting in our storytelling about the risks of Yellowstone. If it happens, which at this point there is no evidence that it's going to anytime soon, and by anytime soon I'm saying hundreds of years at least, um, it would be horrible in every sense of that word. But it is very unlikely to happen. In fact, over the last 50 eruptions of Yellowstone, most of them have been much smaller, have been lava flows. So yes, almost everything you read in the news about Yellowstone is an exaggeration. So as we delve into the depths of our Earth's mysteries, remember that some challenges require audacious thinking. Join us next time as we continue to explore the boundless possibilities of science. If you found this exploration as captivating as we did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more stories from the frontiers of science. Until next time, let our quest for knowledge light the way.